What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Green Room. We're excited you're here with us today. Uh, we're getting ready to have some fun, talk about some great things. Ashton's back. Steven's back. Uh, yeah, we're here. Y'all excited? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got yeah. the Carmex on. I'm good. The Carmex. The what? Carmex. Listen, bro. You know what? I don't leave the I don't I don't leave the house without that. What is that? Is a chapstick? The chapstick? Chapstick. Chapstick. Listen, Wait, is that in your too. makeup bag? Is that in the ziplock? No, not in <laughs> Actually I might have a spare in the ziplock because if I lose it, it's Get, a bad day for me. Show show them show them your ziplock bag. <laughs> show them your ziplock bag. Ashton. Oh this is gosh. this is part of the action. She's doing that. I guess. Pack. So I thought that the name of mine stuff was something different because you said chapstick. No, it's chapstick. <laughs> That's the actual name. <laughs> chapstick. This is this is her makeup bag. Has it been this since I've known you, or have you changed the Ziploc? Oh, I've changed. The Ziploc. Okay. <laughs> Dang, that'd be one strong Ziploc. I've been wanting to know where you got but it from. But it's always been a Ziploc. Always. Yeah. I. Somebody, somebody, please send us uh, a proper makeup, a proper clutch, <laughs> but clutch, they clutch, clutch <laughs> whatever we need. They're available, but people they're not have tried. Yeah. People have tried, yeah. and, and people have. Let's failed. talk about it. Why? Why? Why the ziplock bag? Great question. It all started when I was probably about five. No I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> dang. Oh, but, going deep. Let's let's be honest. My mom used to use a ziplock bag. So oh. one, I saw that growing up. Yeah. Two, I've tried makeup bags. They're always, the shape is not conducive for what I need in my life. Sure. You know? Interesting. And yeah. also. What are you holding in there? <laughs> yeah. like. What? Well, I want to be able to stack it if I need to. And then like. It's good. I don't know. Also, it's clear. So it's yeah. easy to see. Mm. I'm not bougie. I just, need, I just need it. I just need my makeup. And I don't want to be confined. Mm. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Careful. By what the industry tells me, I need in uh -oh. regards to the size of my bag. Wow, wow, the capacity. Praise be. They got is called YouTube. <laughs> Dang. There's, there's more. There's more. Hey, there's, more. there's nothing to hide. Uh, mm, mm. Come on, somebody. There you go. There's there's nothing message to hide. in there. Anyways, <laughs> oh you can usually find me on Sunday mornings walking around with my Ziploc bag. <laughs> Kidding. That's how you know. That's how you <laughs> it's know. True. It's true. <laughs> oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so I I want to talk about just something broad, and we can go wherever we want to go with it. But I just I want to talk about inadequacy. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about submission, mm -hmm. which is completely, totally necessary. Mm -hmm. It's a part of our calling. Uh, but I think there are seasons or people that can take it way too far mm -hmm. and uh, believe something that isn't true about themselves. Yeah. So um, have y'all struggled with that? If so, what did that look like? Let's just get into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have struggled yes. with Yes, I have. <laughs> I have been been Ashton and I have struggled with <laughs> What what did that what did that look like for you? Where uh, was that coming from? What's been your journey with that? I mean, it looked different in different seasons. Mm -hmm. I think what's interesting is inadequacy is is a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like when I first started worship leading, I had never done it before. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? So I was not I didn't know what it actually looked like or what it entailed. I remember Here's some uh, some history. Uh, so I got to be under both Stephen and Rob's leadership um, as I was in development mm -hmm. as a worship leader. And at first, I was given the opportunity to lead a song, but I didn't lead pastoral moments because mm -hmm. I felt inadequate slash was in like it mm -hmm. wasn't a muscle that had been sure. developed within me. Um, but the more I felt inadequate, the less I would step into mm -hmm. the opportunities given mm -hmm. to me. Um, so I felt inadequacy in regards to like leading people, like mm -hmm. feeling like, man, I, I was just in the season of, of not following Christ. Like, how could I step into mm -hmm. this now? Mm -hmm. Or um, I've never experienced this before. So how could I step into? Mm -hmm. um, like you, you could go really, really deep in. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been singing since I was little, little. Mm -hmm. So I've sung in like. Grand Ole Opry, Come like on, stuff like that, Opry. you know. Let's go Opry get life, Opry. Oklahoma, um, and, Texas. and Texas. So like, so I would travel and like 
there's a sense like in the music industry where like there's a desired look mm-hmm. and I never had that. Mm-hmm. I never had that. And so there's a part of like, well, I feel inadequate because I can't meet a standard that someone mm-hmm. has placed on me. Right. That wasn't of God. Right. So like inadequacy shows up in different ways, I think. Mm-hmm. Some of it is truth. Some of it isn't. Mm-hmm. Like I think that there is a part where like development is needed mm-hmm. to be able to step into something. Mm-hmm. But then there is a place where like inadequacy is something's been placed on you that was never supposed to be mm-hmm. yeah. on you. And someone has thought something of you that you took on that was never supposed to be thought of you or taken on. Mm-hmm. So I think it looks different for different people and in different seasons. But if it's something God's calling you to, inadequacy is just a stepping stone to development. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely felt that as well been singing for a very long time since I was little and that was like the sphere of my value it Mm. was just wrapped in that so I like the same I would even when I got on staff I would say that I could sing songs but leading pastoral moments mm, debatable I I I was trying to do that with this and just let that be the thing and sometimes that works Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and I think it worked for a time, but uh, God wanted to challenge that identity and show that there there was more uh, to that thing, uh, more to to our role than just singing mm-hmm. and being a great singer. Yeah, mm-hmm. there. I think it's important to to hone the craft, mm-hmm. and I love honing the craft. Like I really do love to sing, and so it's not an an abandonment of mm-hmm. the skill set, but this idea that that is all you're good for is mm-hmm. not true. And something I had to battle for a long, long, long time growing up in, in church, I heard that like, oh, you're the guy who sings, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah. narrative. And I think it kind of goes back to what you were talking about. There's so much narrative, like I, because of what we do, it's so public and it's open to public opinion. And yeah. so people yeah. say all kinds of things about it. They either critique or they affirm, but even that affirmation can be harmful in a way if it isn't like rooted in, in, in the truth. And um, so people did like affirm my voice and that gift, but I took that as that's, that's me now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is who I am. And so this is what I'm, I'm good at. And so let me just stay here. You know, mm-hmm. even like songwriting, I, I felt that at an early age and it wasn't like received super well. And so I'm like, okay, I don't do that. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not what I do. I sing. Whenever I open my mouth to speak from stage, it's weird and I don't know how to do it. So I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. This is what I do. Um, and it became a crutch. For a long time. And anything outside of that, I was like all kinds of inadequacy fell upon. Like when I was being asked to step into more, either just from leadership or from the Lord, I'm like, no, Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. That's not me. Mm -hmm. But that thought of like who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What is that? What is that really, you know? Yeah. I think for me, it's always been, it's been less about like you know, my instrument, like singing, like all those, I never felt like a lot of inadequacy in like my gifting. Mm -hmm. Um, It was in the other whole other side when they were Mm -hmm. like, Hey, you're going to be a pastor and you're going to have to have really hard conversations with parents and Mm -hmm. people who are way older than you. Cause when Mm -hmm. I started, I was, I mean, I was 21 Mm -hmm. and I remember thinking, yeah, that's not, Nope. I don't have the training. I'm not, there's no way that I could ever mm-hmm. do that, you know. Um, I'm great. I can give me a mic, instrument. I'm ready to go. I'm here for you that. You know, I'm Let here for that all be. day long. Let me be that. Um, but that's not what I was called to. I was called to be a pastor first, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and then I'll be. I'll do the musical side second. Yeah. And so um, that was. That's when mm-hmm. the enemy really got in my head and really tried to like paint this picture of like, yeah, you don't have what it takes to do that. Yeah. Um, and you ought, you should probably think about what what else you could do outside mm-hmm. because this, you're not going to be able to make it as mm-hmm. uh, and do these these two things. You can only yeah. do the musical side. Yeah, it was the same for me. I, I didn't start singing at an early, well, I mean, I guess it was young, but a lot of people start way younger than this. I started singing, like figured out how to sing at age like 13-ish. 
And so, like, I didn't have that whole background of, like, um, performing as a kid in that way. I did piano mm-hmm. my whole life growing up, so I was, like, a whole different thing. Um, but I kind of discovered my gift, and my voice is significantly lower than, like, most at the time, like, worship females. Because, like, Carrie Job was, like, the model of... And she's amazing, and I love people who sing that way. I love you, Carrie. Love, we love you, you, Carrie. Carrie. Um, but I just am not that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I sing in the alto, maybe tenor range. Um, so there was some sense of inadequacy there, and I kind of navigated through that. But more of the inadequacy came, like you were saying, from being young and being in positions to, like, influence adults way older than me. So I started leading worship at uh, 14, 15 years old and um, started leading like teams, like worship bands at 17 in my church growing up. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't, I never felt like I deserved that. And we don't deserve the positions we're put in, of course, but like, I just never felt like fully equipped to step into hard conversations Mm -hmm. um, and kind of just kind of lived in that for a few years, became a pastor here at age 21, um, and was leading a very large team of people, most of them way older than me. And so just having to navigate like the internal dialogue and conflict of like, I have never experienced divorce. <laughs> I have never experienced miscarriage at that point. I have never experienced some of these things that people on my team were going through. Mm-hmm. How do I step in? How could I possibly step right. into that? Like, what do you say? What do you, what do you even say? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's just a it's just a internal struggle wrestle, and I was definitely blessed to be surrounded by um, the pastors that we have mm-hmm. here who are able to speak into some of that. But it's it's been a process. Like even now at twenty six, I there are plenty of things I don't feel adequately equipped to step into. But I think what's interesting is like <laughs> if you look at Jesus's disciples, they were not adequate. They were <laughs> adequate. Right. They were not like speakers they were not teachers yeah but he trained them and he sent them and they did it (laughs) and here we are as a result like Mm -hmm. two thousand years later so i think it speaks to how like the whole idea of adequacy is just it's a it's a falsehood like we will never be enough yeah but we're not asked to be Mm -hmm. we're asked to rely on the one who is the Mm -hmm. only one who is Mm -hmm. and that's all we can do yeah yeah I remember this story. I started at 21 too. Gosh, why do we have the year of 21? Okay, I did, not, I, did not, I did not step into ministry. <laughs> why do we keep doing this? I was 30. This? It's too so much. Right. Um, my, my first leader was 23 and I was 30. So like, <laughs> yeah. talk about it inadequate. Him? No, it wasn't him. Okay. I mean like, as, as a pastor on staff, mm, mm, it was Wes. It was Hello, Wes. Wes. Oh, Wes, yes. we love you. Yes. And like, it was one of those things, like I had to get over the fact that, okay, I'm supposed to be older and wiser. And yet my sure. teacher is younger than me. Yeah. yeah. And so like immediately it was like, okay, it's weird. this window can be a foothold for the enemy if I mm-hmm. allow it to mm-hmm. be yeah. Yeah. like recognizing it, but then also like, okay, now it's time to learn. Let's, let's get down to business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, um, I remember my first time pastor on call. <laughs> <laughs> I was 21. I think it was my second week. Oh man! Like second week on the second job. Second week on the job. Like Maybe something. We didn't it do was that, really right? close. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe could have been some time for and I All those calls, like for those who don't know, pastor on call is like it's an emergency line. Like if anybody needs pastoral care, somebody to you know pray for, yeah. or pray for them. Um, there's a pastor that is always available, even on the off days. And I feel like every one of those calls happens on. The off days or on the weekend, yeah. like throughout the week, they never, at least for me, they mm-hmm. never come through, but it's like on Friday on the one day off we have, that's when the calls come through. And I, so I was at Starbucks this afternoon and I get this call from uh, a guy who uh, told me that he's getting ready to take his mom off the machine mm. and his kids or so her grandkids are just distraught. Yeah. Like, and don't know what to do. Mm. 21. Mm. I've never experienced that at, like, n- nothing close to that ever in my life. And don't, I don't even know what to say. Like, and so I was like, well, okay, let's just pray. And I felt like the prayer wasn't really great. 
like like literally all these feelings are like mm-hmm. happening yeah. at the time of this call. And right. I'm like, even feeling guilty for that. I'm like, I don't like, why am I even here? Like this guy needs somebody mm-hmm. who knows like why, like, what am I supposed to do? And I just prayed and like, there, there isn't a bow on that story. Like that's, it happened. He did tell me, like I, I did like follow up, um, after that and he told me that like it happened and I prayed for him again like and that was really it um I haven't talked to that guy since I don't know where he is um but I I've had to had to believe that if God called me to this Mm -hmm. thing then he called me to that conversation yeah Yeah. even with all of that Yeah. yeah yeah that's so good so I have to then trust that that was enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And I, I think on the topic of inadequacy, like there, it, all of those situations that make you feel that way, if you are following the Lord, right, and you believe that there's a call in your life, that you are in step with Him, then those things are meant to build trust yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. with your Savior. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, I think, reinforce what I what our identity is and it is a vessel mm-hmm. right that we we don't really we talked about this in the last conversation right like we don't create we're we're just scrapbookers like we 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 take yeah. what the, we take influence and cues from things around us and it's the same in those things like we don't we can't create anything uh, we can't create the solution to their problem mm-hmm. we can't but we can uh be chief reminding officers of the presence of God in their life. And we don't need to have the resume of horrible life things in order to relate to that person. We don't need to know exactly what they're going through or know exactly their life experience in order to connect and say the right thing. Mm -hmm. But we have Jesus and he's enough Mm -hmm. for that situation Mm -hmm. and to to help remind them in prayer. Mm Lord, I pray that you're with them. I hope I pray that they feel your presence, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, they know who you are, and that you just continue to wrap your arms around them, mm-hmm. like you are so faithful to you every time. Like that's that has to be enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is enough. That's He's called you to it, um, and that will grow you. Um, but don't ever discount the spirit in your life, and just knowing that—that's what I've had to learn mm-hmm. yeah. and tr- and trust in situations where I'm like, I just got to put my shoulders up and like, okay, Lord, you you got this. I'll be here. But you got it. And I, I think I learned too in that it's like your presence m- matters way more than your knowledge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, There's people so just many, need you to be with just them. They just need yeah. to not be alone in those moments. Yeah. How many times have you cried out to God for answers? Mm-hmm. And all he's ever done is just be there with you yeah. mm-hmm. while you're kicking and screaming. And how that, I, I remember when we had our miscarriage mm-hmm. and it, it wasn't very long. Like we didn't even, we didn't know that she was pregnant for very long. And still like all these like waves of emotions are like yeah. going through me. Like, honestly, the thoughts were like, I felt played, mm. played, like duped. And angry. And then I felt guilty for feeling angry because I'm a pastor. <laughs> because I've walked people through this yeah. thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And, but he just sat there with me. Mm-hmm. Um, he just was there. Yeah. You can give me my feels, bro. <laughs> I, and like, <coughs> that was what I needed. Yeah. 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 That was what I needed. Like, yeah. it really is just that simple. Yeah. Like, like, what answer is going to suffice for nothing. all the things that you're feeling? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We lost a baby. Right. Mm-hmm. Nothing. There's no like pill. There's no book. There's no yeah. sermon yeah. that's yeah. going to like cure the right. bring the feeling out of you. Right. Yeah. But he's so faithful to just, sit with us in just to be that soothing balm mm-hmm. at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. There, I, there's there's a verse in the Bible that describes like his wraparound presence, and I love that image mm-hmm. so much because I felt that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he was faithful to do it. I was driving to work, and I'm just angry, and he was just there, just wrapping his arms around me, and like yeah. Yeah. that's what was needed. And so that's that's all we need to do. If that's what he's doing, that's what we need to do. Yeah. And, and I think we can we can all do that, right? And that's that's the lesson learned through this long-winded story that I'm sharing. 
all, we have everything we need in our hand right now yeah. to, to bring comfort, to bring the presence of God into people's lives and to mm-hmm. step into those things that we don't feel equipped to do. It's yeah. mm-hmm. good. Oh. It's good. It's good because we're not, our, what we do as pastors, it, our value is not in our knowledge. It's not in our experience. That brings and adds mm-hmm. yeah. layers of value mm-hmm. and layers of like how we can pour in because of what God has taught us. But it's in being a vessel, pure. And so, so the 21-year-old kid who sits with the, the, the dad or the, the son who's about to take his mom off the ventilator, mm-hmm. all you had to do was just be a vessel of God's spirit you didn't have to have experienced that. And um, I would love to know where he's at now. Yeah. But um, I think it's just it's just a good reset to our to our mindset. Like I am not here because of anything I bring to the table. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm here because God called me to be here. And so he's going to equip me for whatever that looks mm-hmm. like. If that looks like Stepping into conversations that I've never had before. Mm-hmm. That's what it's going to look like, but he's going to give me the words okay. mm-hmm. and he's going to give me the wisdom and he will bring his presence into those situations and that's all we need. Yeah. And let grace be the fuel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let, okay. the, let the reality of your depravity fuel the step forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, it's in light of that, right? That's what grace is. In light of our weakness, yeah. God still bestows. God still gives. He still pours out. He still is present with us. Oh my gosh, let's go then. Mm-hmm. What can't What can't we do? What can't we step into? What, um, you know, like let let that be the thing that actually fuels you because now it's on Him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not on you. Yeah, it's. We keep going back to submission. <laughs> There's a reason I mean, for that. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But yeah. it's it's like <clears throat> I don't know. We keep go, we keep going back to that, and I, it's it's a theme that is so necessary. I think in all of us because I think God He wants to give us freedom, right? And I think. We think that our knowledge, our equipping is what brings the freedom and brings the deliverance or the breakthrough in our life. Oh, I get it now. I know it now. Mm -hmm. So now I'm good. And now I can move forward, right? It's it's the complete opposite. It's like the more we let go, Mm -hmm. the more we let go and realize, oh, this is not for me. Like I really can't do. But look at God and what he actually is doing Mm -hmm. and making of my life. Wow. Yeah. There's the freedom. Yeah. That's the breakthrough and the revelation we need. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. Yeah. I, I don't want to knock any like knowledge lovers out there. Like no. they're amazing books, amazing. Yeah. Like do that, and if you love that, like if that keeps you close to the Lord, then mm-hmm. do that. You know. But again, just don't put it above. Don't make that yeah. the thing. Yeah. That don't don't make that the fuel in your tank. Right. Grace mm-hmm. is the fuel in your tank. For it's sure. one that lasts so much longer mm-hmm. than whatever knowledge you can acquire. Yeah. It's going to bring you so much further. It's going to make you feel richer. Yeah. Like you're, you're going back to who you were. We were created to worship him, to abide, to be mm-hmm. with him, not yeah. to do for him. Right. It's a gift to do, yeah. right? It's a gift. It's, it's the byproduct of being. It, it doesn't come before. And so uh, the more that we can love letting go love weakness let's let's boast in our inadequacy because yeah. god is faithful right, right. Yeah. uh i i think the freer we're all going to be yeah, yeah. i love That's awesome. you you just alluded to it but where paul talks about like i will boast all the more proudly in my weaknesses yes. there's a reason for that it's mm-hmm. not that paul didn't know all the things like he freaking wrote the bible <laughs> um, it's it's because in our weakness like he said like god's strength is magnified and that blesses us. Like, mm-hmm. that is the whole point. Like, the whole point is to know God more and more. Mm-hmm. And He is revealed when we are not enough <laughs> yeah. because He shows up. Like, yeah. that is fertile ground for Him to be like, this is who I am. This is my heart for you and for my people. And that is the prize. Like, that is the prize. And so we can learn all the things. And it, there's benefit to all of that and studying like theology and studying like mm-hmm. how to have conversations and leadership wins and like all the stuff that we can learn, like benefit to all of it. But in our weakness is where we see Christ 
the like the most mm-hmm. potent mm-hmm. version mm-hmm. of him. Well, and I think it's in our weakness that we recognize we need yeah. Christ. Yes. Yeah. Like that for me. So we talk about we're talking about like leadership and and uh, pastoring people, but like okay, so I, I have a cough and I, so like mm-hmm. I've been dealing with health things for the past yeah. I want to say year, two years, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Um, and what I've recognized is the gifting that I used to lean on mm-hmm. has not it has wavered, sure. right? Yeah. yeah, like the things that I used to be able to say, like I'm secure in this. I know, I know this is never going to fail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's failed. Yeah. yeah. And so recognizing in those moments, like, okay, God, I'm bringing you my broken, weak pieces mm-hmm. because I I still am called to this yeah. even in yeah. sickness. Yeah. 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 And so I'm, bring, I'm bringing the the little that I have, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm expecting you to multiply it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I'm expecting you to show up. Yeah, yeah. and he has, and, and he it's does. it's in those moments when I'm like, okay, it's not actually about a piece of gifting or right. a talent that you've been able to just rely on all of your life. Mm-hmm. It's like no, now I fully have to rely on Jesus, mm-hmm. even in the thing that has been a security blanket for, yes. <laughs> for mm-hmm. my life that I've been able to trust, like. Yeah, it's like okay, and recognizing like he still can use that. Yeah, um, and not only still, but sometimes uses those weak parts to even further his kingdom. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. people see like there's a different kind of trust and faith that has to be built in those yeah. moments when you have to fully trust and rely on God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to step in. So man, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I just think about uh, you know it can be really scary to voice those weaknesses Mm um i think about how like the inner thoughts of like okay if i share this or Uh, if people know mm -hmm. then does that like actually like take away from my leadership yeah um Mm. those are such isolating yeah Yeah. it is but it's a but it's reality like people are you know whether that's you know, a sinful thing or not a sinful thing. Like it could be something really holding you back Mm -hmm. to not be able to share those things that are actually crippling you. And like right now, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's good to share all these different things of like, um, like these are, this is like when we do share these things, we we pull on Christ, like we yes. pull on the Lord, yeah. and that's who we're. That's who will satisfy those things. That's who will replenish. That's who will um, renew. He will do all those things. Um, but like, you know, I guess my encouragement is for anyone that's listening to go. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I promise you from experience and from like watching God work in so many different ways that when we open ourselves up to allow those insecurities mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or those parts of us that we feel like aren't developed enough or whatever, when we, we allow those things to come out, yep. there is so, so much God can do um, with an open heart. But yeah. if we're closed off to it where we can miss so much mm-hmm. um and so i think it, it's just like as we were talking i'm like man i'm just thinking about whoever there's somebody on the other side going man but if i share this like mm-hmm. i'm they all know mm-hmm. everybody knows mm-hmm. and it's like but there's so much more strength yeah. in us yeah. knowing yeah. so that we can walk with you and Obviously, the Lord is. That this has been the craziest thing. I have seen more people be willing to confess to God mm-hmm. um, of that weakness, uh-huh. of that thing, of those insecurities, mm-hmm. and not be able to confess it to people. Mm-hmm. That's terrifying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is actually putting. I'm putting more value. In what I think about what the people do than what God does, Ooh. yeah, I'm yeah, and it's like, man, that 100%. that's ter- that's terrifying because this is the one who's who's holding the keys to it all. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the one that I really, but and and there's a part of like you know we talk about you know confessing to God uh, and just confession. It's like we confess to God for forgiveness. We confess to others for healing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're missing the healing. You're missing. Yeah, you healing. are missing the healing part of that. That's good. When we can open up to those inadequacies and go, 
this is here I am. Mm -hmm. And like, let that just be, let that, let us just be open books. Yeah. Um, so that we can grow together, so we can yeah. heal together, so that we can uh, be the pastors and leaders that God has called us to be. But it, it takes both sides of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was just thinking about like characters in the Bible, like people in the Bible that you're like, you're looking at their life and you're like, what an incredible follower of God. Wait, why did you doubt? Like, but you get to see both. Yeah. yeah. And we learn and we can relate to those in the Bible because we we see both pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, people can relate to us more when they can see both pieces. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, like absolutely. it's it's a it's a it's a wholeness of yeah. like, hey, I'm I'm a human who is following Christ, and I still got a thorn in my side, mm -hmm. or I'm yes. still facing something, and yet I'm still trusting God, yeah. Yeah. and yet He's still moving in my life, and yeah. yet, and it's all of our stories all of the stories in the Bible, all of our individual stories that will help propel people in moments of doubt, in mm -hmm. moments of mm -hmm. uh, lacking, whatever those things are. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason both and are in the Bible. There's mm -hmm. a reason both and exist within each and every one of yeah. us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because no one is perfect. Yeah. 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 Um, and even people in leadership, like there are moments where like, we just got to be honest um, honest with God. I, yeah. I think you got to process it with God first. Mm -hmm. Allow yeah. Him to be yeah. bring the truth. person to bring truth to yeah. that, and then share. Like, hey, here's where I've been struggling. Here's where, here's where I'm having a difficult time. Would you guys encourage me? Would mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. would you bring accountability? Whatever the thing is needed in that moment. And like you said, like that's where the healing comes from. And then when they face it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've modeled to them what it looks like to walk through crisis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've modeled like in their actual life, not just on a page. Like this is where this is where the word of God comes to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is whenever it's modeled and walked out through his followers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think it's just so important. It's so important for us to be uh, transparent mm -hmm. um, with like we we want to know how God's moving in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. there's a reason there are stories and stories and stories of people who were inadequate mm -hmm. in the Bible, mm -hmm. yeah. who stepped into something. Yeah. And maybe didn't even do it right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. we, we are, we're all facing those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're all facing, you know, we will all face some kind of difficulty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, yeah. you will face hardship. Yeah. But he's overcome. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. in, in the process of when we face those hardships, allowing his victory to be the thing that speaks to it and allowing uh, our circumstances to show his victory, yes, mm -hmm. yes. even as we're walking through it. I love the turn that this is taking. Mm -hmm. I, I want to share this story. Uh, uh, a guy that I worked with um, had a moral failure mm -hmm. and had to stepped down from, from full time and we got lunch after and just wanted to love on him, show him like, you know, like we're good. Like I just care about, I care about you. Right. Cause th those things, especially like sexual sin, it's an indicator of brokenness. Mm -hmm. it, 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 they're hurting people. Yeah. Right. And there could be a bunch of things that contribute to that. So I want to see that heart. I want to like get to that place and show him that, you know, still love him. And I just asked him, like, so, like, what, what, what brought you to that place? What happened? And you know, he shared a little bit of his history and um, his predisposition to some of that stuff. And he's like, you know, well, but I had like I had accountability for a while before I moved here, and um, I was like, well, what, what happened to that? Why, like, why isn't that present now? And um, he's like, well, I, I just thought I was strong enough for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge lesson for me. Where the lie takes root in the whole inadequacy, weakness yeah. thing, in, in believing that we are strong enough. We want to be strong. Right. Yeah. Let's yeah. just be real. Yeah. Yeah. Like we want to be okay. We want to be healthy. We want yeah. to be strong. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but when we lie to ourselves for the sake of our desire, mm there's an opportunity for the enemy to creep in mm -hmm. um, and, 
and shackle you again. Like you, you, you bring yourself back into that place of bondage, but you hold the key this time. Like mm. you, you have the tools to, now you're walking around half free, you know, mm. because you've entrapped yourself into this lie of believing that you're strong enough mm -hmm. to handle the thing you know you are weak in, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it, it goes back to what you're saying. Like if, if you confess there's healing that takes yeah. place mm -hmm. and you are free, yeah. you know, sin only, only seeks to take us captive. Right. That's all it ever does. Our, our, our predispositions, that's all it will ever do. And to believe that we are stronger than those things is a lie, right? It's, it goes mm -hmm. back to like, we have to boast. We have to love being weak. We have mm -hmm. to love it. We have to get comfortable with that yeah. uh, because then there's nothing that can that can come against that thing, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like there's those lies won't take root. If you know that, man, if I'm weak, I know God is strong and yeah. he, God can take care of that thing in me. So I'm not going to step. I'm not going to believe that. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to be in that place where I'm in control over my destiny or, or my thing. Like God's going to take care of that, you know? Yeah, so perfect. that accountability piece is huge too. Like there's a reason we're called to bear each other's burdens that burden piece isn't just, oh, this is happening in my family or, oh, like my finances are struggling. It's like, I struggle with this. Yeah. Help, like, help me, like, be accountable. Yes. Like, it's carrying yes. the weight together. Yes. Because we're not strong enough. And if we convince ourselves that we are, we isolate. Mm -hmm. And then no one can mm -hmm. speak into it, not right. even the Lord. Like, mm. so there, there's so much to be said for just the openness, yeah. Yeah. the vulnerability. I'm the worst at vulnerability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a, I know like the Enneagram is sketchy now, but I'm an Enneagram 8, or it was, whenever we were like, okay, with that. anyways. She's an am. Um, just very, like, I, I've never, vulnerability has never come easy to me, but I, I've never felt so free as to when, as when I, like, have stepped into vulnerability mm -hmm. in the last few years. Yeah. You've seen it happen. Like, yeah. I was not very vulnerable when we first got married, but mm -hmm. um, just speaking from, like, my experience, there is so much freedom, and there's so much growth that happens when you're able to just, like, this is who I am. This is what I struggle with. This is where I've been. This is what I've done. Like, just be an open book. Like, if you're willing, like you were saying earlier, if you're willing to take that to the Lord, you should be willing to take that to other people too. Right, yeah. right, right. Especially right. in the church. Like, yeah. not everyone in, <laughs> needs to know every little detail. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, the discretion is is important, but find those trusted people. Find the trusted people. Yeah. yeah. Because that is, that's a people thing. Of faith. Not, yeah. and unfortunately, sometimes the church doesn't know how to handle that. Mm. And, and I think distrust uh, is, is it, it, it can become a habit because of how we see these things handled, sure. right, on, on the public space. Yeah. But I would even argue that even if, even if like you're afraid of getting fired, mm. I would rather be fired and free yeah, that's good. Then yeah. hired and shackled. Yes, yeah. right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because absolutely. It, it'll also be found out. Like the truth yeah. will come out at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. like I'm yeah. just not trying to I'm not trying to be there, you know. Yeah. And and like I said, like we've said this before, our the the pastor isn't isn't um or your calling isn't tied to a title. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? That's God good. can still do infinitely through you and he yeah. will do. Imagine yeah. it imagine if you're walking with this struggle with this hidden thing inside of you and you've seen the God like all the work that God is doing in front of you, imagine how much more he could do if you were completely free. Yeah. 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 That's good. Let's get there. So yeah. find the people that you can trust yeah. and can work that out. Hopefully it's your spouse. Yeah. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hopefully it's a close friend. Uh, if it's not your leader, find mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. yeah. to carry that burden with you and mm -hmm. the healing will come. Yeah. And yeah. God's going to do infinitely more through that than he yeah. can do in, in the current situation. Yeah, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. That's really good. And I find there's benefit in having more than one person too. Sure. Like two oh, or yeah. three. Well, let's also really encourage people. Like if you have... If you're actually facing something that you need counseling for, like that is some counseling is great. Counseling yes. is ten great. Ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. for ten out of ten. <laughs> because here's ten the deal. Out of ten. Um, sometimes it's hard to find what the root is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and very counseling, true. I, like I've seen it time and time again, helps you process to a point where you can find the root. Yeah. So that your red flags can happen faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so the the little like siren that's like, hey, you need to talk to someone happens faster. Yeah. Sure. It's, yeah. It happens earlier in the process, mm -hmm. so you're not like 70 steps down the road and you've made a bunch of decisions that you didn't yes. want to make. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, 
That's good. Our pastor talked a little bit about that. He was like, disrupt the cue, yeah, right? Yeah, disrupt the cue. When, mm-hmm. when we're building habits or trying to change mm-hmm. our habits, right? Find what the cue is. That's what counseling yeah. does. Yeah, counseling does. It helps you show sure. what the cue of events yeah. are that lead to that thing, yep. and you can yeah. disrupt the cue. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Shout out to Pastor Craig. Shout out, yeah. shout out, shout out, shout yeah. out. Shout out, shout out, shout out. <laughs> shout out, shout out. We love uh, you. He has been gifted for sure. Yes. yes. Power yes, to change. Is. Go mm. by him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Power to change is out now. Uh, <laughs> You should go it's by. You should. No, it's a great really yeah. uh, He did not tell us to say that. No. We're just, we're just, we're blessed by by that thought, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's good. And um, this past weekend, I had a vocalist who was uh, who has led before. She led a different song though. wasn't mm-hmm. like super confident in it, mm. and started spiraling in uh, rehearsal. That happened to me this weekend too. In rehearsal, <laughs> and so there was a moment where like. One, as a leader, it's like recognizing what's happening in the moment, mm-hmm. having the mm-hmm. discernment, and then stepping in and, okay, so what are you processing? Like, where's your head? Like, I don't feel comfortable. Like, the way I practice it this week, it just feels different on the state. Like, all of these things. So it's like, cool, what are you believing right now? Mm-hmm. What yep. are you believing right now? Yep. Mm-hmm. And um, being able to help your people step out of the spiral. Yeah. yeah. Like, she felt inadequate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the enemy was like, Here's my window. Right, right. And just like hopped on it and she just kept, you know, al- like allowing instead of she didn't stop and say, like someone speaks some truth over me right now. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't it be, be amazing if we could get our, ourselves and our teams mm-hmm. yes. to a point where it was like before they started the spiral? Yeah. They were like, I need help. Catch. I'm here. I'm yeah. in this space. Can yeah. someone, like, I think that's what we honestly like. The, the epitome of what this process could look like is that mm-hmm. you know like a, a, like being open and honest enough so that our teams can see this is what it looks like to ask for help in the mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I want them to ask for help yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't want them to be suffering right yeah in that spiral of things and so yeah yeah I don't know where I was going with that. no that's, <laughs> that's, that's really good, good. yeah that that happened to me as well and not just a person on my team but me mm-hmm. this weekend we, we have stories. So, I mean, all kinds of stories, right? I've talked to you, I've, I've said, like, singing was the place that I found the value, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's been a ton of growth, stepping into more things. Like, I, I, I speak from stage now. So, like, my role this weekend was to uh, handle the transitions and push people to take a next step. Speaking, I did not sing at all this weekend, mm-hmm. and I've done it before. This is not my first mm-hmm. time, but this particular weekend, mm-hmm. I I was feeling some type of way the whole time, mm-hmm. and I couldn't get my head above water on it for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Like, I I don't know why I was feeling all kinds of like, oh gosh, okay, here we go. I hope it's clear. I you know I hope mm-hmm. I I hope I inspire people. Yeah. I I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm hoping. But the key word there is I. Yeah. 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 And I, that was the whole battle in my head was, is it me or is it God? Mm. If I believe it's me, I'm going to be all kinds of anxious about it. Mm-hmm. And I, that's where the spiral comes yeah. from, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is believing that you're the one in charge. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> of course you're going to feel inadequate right. because you're not. Yeah. And you're carrying something you were never meant to carry. That's on God to do. You're just yeah. meant okay. to be present. Yeah. You're meant to be obedient, all those things. And he will do the work in you. Mm-hmm. And that was a huge struggle for me. And so I just tried to share that with people this weekend to invite the <laughs> help me. It's, yeah. You know, it's like, it's that Kevin Hart thing. Help, help me. me. <laughs> <laughs> help. Like, yo, yeah. I'm just feeling, I'm feeling nervous yeah. this weekend. I'm just feeling nervous. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know why but it's just there and so there and pe- that the affirmation came and even from people that I didn't even ask mm-hmm. like pe- I think just people saw it on me like um one of the spouses of, of our staff members just came up and was like hey man you're really good at that I just needed to tell you that today mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> thank you you yeah. know like and I, was, I knew like that was that was the, oh but then in that you see this it was a whole war this whole weekend I'm like I love it. man Thank people you, people can tell People can tell you're nervous mm. up there. <laughs> People can tell, get your act together. You know, it's uh-huh. like, then I couldn't even receive it the way I needed to receive right. it. Mm-hmm. Ugh, that's well, spiritual warfare. I too, like, as pastors, sometimes we think we don't need to be pastored. Ah. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Oh. Like, this weekend, okay, so this weekend I, I had one of those, like, okay, I've been sick for a while. Gosh, like, I, usually I can power through, you mm-hmm. know, like, 
with staying positive and a positive mindset, mm-hmm. whatever that thing is. And this week, this Sunday, it was like, no, nah, I don't have it in me. Like, yeah. I'm so tired. Oh, yeah. I'm getting emotional. Oh. I'm so tired of being sick. I'm so uh, tired yeah. of feeling this way, just like angry right. and frustrated and all the things. And I had to go to one of my other pastors and say, I'm just so tired. Uh, I'm so tired yeah. of being in this place. I'm so tired of not feeling like 100%. All the things. Yeah. She's like, cool. We're praying right now. I was like, thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I just needed I just needed to not carry it. Yeah. yeah. I needed yeah. to not carry it by myself. Yeah. And allow someone to remind me and speak peace and Jesus over me and my mm. situation. Just because we're pastors doesn't need we doesn't mean we don't need people and we don't need people to pastor us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sorry. Good. Good. Ooh, that's so good. <laughs> but like that's and so that good. wasn't even an an inadequacy thing. That was a that was a Here's where I'm struggling. Yes. Yeah. And like sometimes that just is. And it's yeah. like in those moments, instead of just keeping it in and trying to power through, that's that is the red flag to bring yeah. people mm. in. Oh, yeah. disrupt the to, cue. Yeah. To allow people to remind you of truth, remind you of Jesus, remind you of what he's called you to, mm-hmm. all of those pieces. And it just helps lift the burden. They're they're helping carry it with you. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? Yeah. So it, it the overwhelming sense of frustration or anger just started to melt away because I allowed someone in yeah. in that moment. That's so good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, let's Oof. shift. <laughs> that's, 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 good good. Yeah. That's, good, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let the tears. I uh, know, right? Because <laughs> we're just going to do something funny now. <laughs> so it's going to be like just dark different. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got, I, I got a yawn. Hold on, <laughs> yawn. Cut, <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Did you cut, Charlie? <laughs> we're still, we're still rolling. You guys want to see what I see over here? Do you see what I, I see? see? Charlie came. There's a Charlie over there. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to what he says. Uh, so I. I'd like to know, uh, is what's a video that adequately represents your sense of humor? Pull it up. I want to see it. This is hard. <laughs> All right. Help. <laughs> see, the thing about my sense of humor is that it's not one sense of humor. It's like... <laughs> Multiple it's like senses a multifaceted, multi sense, multi mm. like three dimensional object of wow. humor. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, that is your humor is three dimensional. The side, there's like the Christian niche. There's like the just it's dumb like, stuff. <laughs> there's like the cultural references. I, I don't know. Well, just to, for just for now, just for today, just, just for, for today, now. in this moment, ta-da. Mm. in this moment right now. Okay, I got one. You want to go first? Sure. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Do I just play it? Yeah. Just play. <laughs> I want to see it. Hold just on. play it. Play it out and bring it closer. Is it? Do we want him closer to the mic? Okay, yeah, bring it close to the mic. Okay, you ready? Here it goes. What about in school? Martha Luther King Jr. Martha Luther King Jr. What'd he do? He died for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's, the, it's the way she said, "Die, she, she died, died for our sins." <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. Listen, that little girl's the best. I just when pe I don't even know how to describe it. It's just a part of that. Like I thought I knew what I was saying, and I was so confident about it that I just I'm, it just gets me. And I'm like the look, the dead look. Yeah. He died for he our son. <laughs> Martin Luther. Like, she just woke up from a nap. Yeah. Just. Or she's, like, so tired of mom asking, what did you learn at school today? She's right. like, oh, my gosh, Ugh. stop asking me. Like, he died for our sins. Yeah. He died. <laughs> he died. <laughs> Duh. Everybody already knows. Everybody knows her. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, anybody else? Um, I guess I could go. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. The volume's up. (laughs) You ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one's one of those, like you know, the captions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sure. 
winning. Your undivided attention, please. You couldn't handle my undivided attention. <laughs> Like your undivided oh, <laughs> the office. The office. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dwight Schrute. Would you say Dwight encapsulates your humor just, I mean, just as the, a whole? I mean, the whole thing. I mean, I just. I love how intense Dwight is. He's very intense. You couldn't handle my undivided attention. <laughs> like. <laughs> I also feel like that's my toddler. You know, like mm. there's a piece of it where it's like feels so relatable to like uh-huh. Uh-huh. real life. I'm like, if Ember, if Ember really truly gave me her undivided attention, like what would that look like? Right. <laughs> kind of terrifying. Yeah. I think, actually, <laughs> will you ever know? <laughs> what's yeah. like? I want. What's like? Because uh, she's three, right? Yeah, she's almost four, but yeah. Dang! Mm-hmm. Oh I know. my god! It's crazy. She's that's almost so crazy. four. So oh. like, what I know. Like attitude sets in at this time. What's the snarkiest thing she said in recent mm. in recent history? Go away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally last night. Go away from me. I said, is there a nicer way to say that? Go away from me, please. <laughs> no, not she with the, the please on the back. <laughs> I just go, go away. away, away. From me, please. Go away from me. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Like I was like. And it's it's one of those things where like it's funny sometimes, but right. I can't show her it's funny, uh, right? Because then it gets worse. Yeah, Lennox was yelling from the room the other day. I made him go to bed because he didn't eat his dinner, mm-hmm. and uh, he was like yelling from his room. And he's going, "I'm hungry." <laughs> he's like, "I had like zero things." <laughs> Why didn't he eat his dinner? I was like, bro, I tried to tell, we tried to get him to eat his dinner for like 35 minutes. I was like, I'm done, dude. That's it. He's like, I had like zero (laughs) things. I was like, dude. I'm standing next to the door and I just like laugh and walk away because I was like, I can't. The The zero thing. The other day she goes, my hair is a bad mood. (laughs) Oh my God. I've been there. I mean, I've never heard something more true in my life. (laughs) My hair is a bad mood. <laughs> My hair is a bad I, mood. I get it, girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. My hair is a bad mood. He <laughs> died for our sins. He died for he our died sins. sins. <laughs> I got one. Okay. I'm nervous. Gosh, I love this. In a CC one, face <gasps> one. In the beginning. Uh, <laughs> so in the in the in the beginning. Bini- bini- <laughs> yeah. In yeah. the, in, in, uh, in the, listen properly. in, listen properly. in listen the beginning, yeah, in, in, in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, I like that head shake, mm-hmm. I get it, in the be- in <laughs> he's like, the he's, got, he's got to play it off, he's processing the word that got yeah. him, in the, in the, Hmm. In the, like, I don't think y'all hear me. <laughs> the train wreck. I feel so bad Dude. for him, but that's in so. The I love it. He can't it. get it. He can't find it. I the guy in the back. Listen properly. Listen. <laughs> Listen. That's one of Charlie's favorites too. He was <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the Charlie cam on, but he's dying in the, over here. In the meninging. In the meninging. In the. Dude, I had. I made my whole. I had my whole family do that. Stella, <laughs> Zoe, Joe, all the kids are like, yes. Oh. She's listening. I had to make sure that it was good. I, there, there are so just many the things clean that version. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've liked on my TikTok, and I'm just picking. I'm just picking one because, like I said, I don't know how to condense my sense of humor. So this one's. It's just so much. So it's strong. multifaceted, so rich, <laughs> three dimensional. You're just not key. I mean, I'm so unique. <laughs> Please enjoy this strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Just emo strawberry. Emo strawberry. Emo strawberry. Emo strawberry. Emo strawberry. <laughs> so have you seen the ones with the dogs on it? Like a dog will have like uh, oh some like gosh. their hair off to the side. I also put, love all you know the didn't I do it for you? <laughs> like with the long noses. <laughs> the amount I sing that song around our house for no reason at all. Uh, you can attest. Yes. <laughs> all things. Charlie, do you have a video? <laughs> in the meaning. In the meaning. 
That's good. Solid. That's good. Oh well, thanks for being with us. It's yeah. really fun. Yeah. Uh, let's pray. Yeah. Let's pray. <laughs> I'll pray. I'll pray together. Lord, in the beginning, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Breathe, breathe. Okay, let's pray. (sighs) Lord, I'm thankful for these people, people that we can share our life with, that we can laugh with, that we can cry with uh, for your church. And uh, I I pray that these truths would live in our heart, Mm -hmm. that we would love being weak in front of you and uh, uh, look upon your face every day and be reminded of who you are and who we are in light of you that uh, we are full of grace, full of mercy because of your son, because of your sacrifice. We thank you uh, and we pray all of these things. And it's in your son's name we pray, amen. Thanks for being with us, you guys. You can follow us anywhere on all platforms, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, at LC Worship. Uh, We look forward to engaging with you guys more. See you next time.